In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this horizontal bar chart, which you can use to automatically highlight one set of series in a data set. So as you can see, when I select a different athlete, the highlight automatically changes to highlight that athlete. As well, if I were to change the test, the graph automatically updates to reflect the new values. This is going to be really powerful if you need to pull out one specific piece of data and show that versus many other pieces. So let's get after it. Okay, so we're back. And in order to get this project started, where we create the chart that's going to go right here, we first need to pull out some of the data from our data set that's right here on the left. Now I'm using the, the same data set that we used in the index match video in the last video, just to keep things kind of moving along and the same and show you how you can build these projects on top of each other to create something kind of cool. Okay, so what we're gonna wanna do is Based on our selections here, we've used some drop-down menus. We want Dave's values on 2021 April 07 for the 40 meter. We're going to pull out those values just off to the side here. So the first thing I want to pull out is the athlete name. Then I'm going to want to pull out the date and the values. So what this is going to look like, I can actually do this with one formula, and that is the filter formula. And then we're going to use this index match that we learned in the last video inside of this formula so that we can match for the right variable. So how we're going to do this, underneath athlete name, I'll just go up to my formula tab and I'm going to type equals filter. Now for filter, it's going to ask me what range I want. And if I open up some curly brackets, I can actually put multiple ranges together. So the first range that we want is going to be our athlete names, which basically goes from A2 all the way down to A. So it's gonna take this whole column here. Then comma, um, interesting, if you are in a country that uses comma, commas as part of your um, decimal places, then you will actually wanna use a semicolon here. Okay, so let's go with comma because I'm in um, North America. And then the second thing that we wanna pull out is actually our date, which is stored in B2 all the way down to B. So we have B2, B, and then comma again. Now we're gonna use our index match to actually find the column that we want. So what this is going to look like is equals index. And what I want to index is all of my data. So that starts at A2 and goes all the way to E. So I'll just put double dots E and then comma it's going to ask me what row I want. I'll leave that blank and I'm going to match for the column. So we're going to type in match. It's going to ask me what is the search key. In this case, it's going to be the test that we've selected, comma, where do I want to look for it? I wanna look for it in our header. So A1 all the way across to E1 and then comma false because these are not sorted, bracket, bracket, and then curly bracket to end off this array. So when I go through this, this is going to return the athlete name, the athlete or the date of the test, and um, the actual test name. Now, what are the conditions when I want this done? Well, in this case, we're only gonna have one condition, and that's when the date from B2 to B is equal to the date that we've selected in H3. And when I close this whole thing off and hit enter, what you're gonna see is we get all of those values over here on the right hand side. So we get Steve, Dave, Sean, and John on the same date, and that's the values that we get for them. I'm just going to bold this to signify that they're headers, and I will put that in the center. So if I were to graph this, highlight both of these, and insert a chart, you can see that the chart looks very similar to the one I had in the intro video, <clears throat> but nothing is highlighted. It doesn't matter um, what athlete I choose, it's not going to highlight anything. Okay, so now in order to do that, we just have to create some helper columns here, which actually allow us to pull out the value differently. So the way that I like to do this is I'll have one column for um, chart and then highlight. So the first one for chart 
we're going to write a formula that basically looks through all of these names and if they do not match the name that we um, have selected then I just want to reference their values. So what this is going to look like under chart we'll type equals um, array formula and what array formula does it allows us to write one formula that's going to work its way all the way down this column and look through all of these values to make sure um, that they all don't match and inside of that I'm going to type if and I'm just going to use the array formula on these four but if I was if I had a larger data set I would just delete this five and just allow it to go all the way down but I'm going to go um, k2 to k5 does not equal the name that we've selected then what I want to do is I want to reference m2 to m5 Otherwise, let's leave it blank, and when I close this off, what you can see is it's only going to return the ones that don't match. And if I change the name, it changes which ones that it actually returns. So that's step one. Now step two, what we can do is copy this same formula, and I'm going to go over to highlight and paste it in. And this, this time, instead of does not equal, we want equals h2 and you can see it gives us our last one. Okay, now from here, it's as simple as just creating that chart. So what I want to do is select Steve, Dave, Sean, and John, and then our chart values and our highlight value, and I'm going to go to insert chart, and right away, you can see that it's starting to work for us. I'll change this to a bar chart, and I'll turn my stacking onto standard so that the chart sits right in the middle. If we have a 100%, it will make it 100% all the way across. No stacking means that it's looking for two series here but only returning one. So you can see there's a weird kind of gap. And then if we turn it on standard, what it would do is stack them on top of each other. But since there's only one series to display, it uh, will only display that one series. Now from here, we can clean up our chart a little bit. If I put it underneath that, um, spot that we created all this. This can just be the values in our chart. And let's change the um, colors a little bit. So what I like to do when I create charts like this is I'll go to the series and select the series of all of the other values and just make it maybe a little bit lighter so that it really makes the highlighted series pop. And then maybe just give it a little bit brighter red color. I'll delete this other chart. And now you, as you can see, as I select a different name or test, it will automatically highlight those values. Now the final thing is you probably don't want this table on your actual sheet. So what you could do is just hide this, right click and hide. You'll see that all of your data from your chart goes away. But if I double click, there's an option to include hidden and filter data and it'll come right back. And then you have this nice clean looking dashboard and we can change around our dates and everything else. Okay, so I hope this video helps you out, and if it does, please like and subscribe to the channel and share it with somebody that you think might find this useful, and I will continue to pump out videos to help you create better charts, better reports, and be able to display information better to your athletes and coaches. So thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video.